Welcome in that video tutorial which introduces the Golemizator tool. Um, here I'm running Golem 6.2.1 and uh, we introduced the Golemizator tool a couple of releases ago. It can be found from here. Let me reset it. Um, and it can be used for two different scenarios. So one is, let's say you make uh, you made uh, like a brand new animation of your hero character. Uh, like this one here, where I have a horse and rider on top of it, and uh, you would like to uh, bring this hero animation as a vignette and uh, use it and layout it using the Golem layout tools. So that's uh, one option. Um, that can be used and that can be done like super easily using the Golem Izeto tool. Other scenario is. Let's say you're using another curl package for your simulation than Golem. Um, in most of those packages, you could export uh, this simulation as a Maya compatible file, and uh, that will bring you Maya skeletons with a couple of keyframes on it. And uh, you can import those into uh, Maya and use the Golemizator tool to just uh, convert that as a Golem compatible caches. Uh, for those two scenarios, it means that Afterwards, when it's been converted as a Golem solution cache, you could use the Golem layout tools to relay out your, uh, relay out your animations. So uh, maybe just uh, change the terrain and adapt it to the terrain, duplicate the character, time offset them, uh, change the geometry assignment, do some shading variation, uh, even change the postures if you'd like to. Um, one of the nice things you also need to remember using the Golemizator is that it doesn't use a Golem full license, it used the cheapest license which is the Golem layout license. So let me address those two scenarios. So let's say here you got those two hero animation uh, which results in uh, two skeletons with uh, keyframes on top of it. Um, and let's say you would like to just convert that in just a couple of clicks uh, as a Golem simulation cache. Let's say also that you don't know anything about Golem, so you don't know how to convert a character and you don't even know how to do a simulation or export a simulation. So you can just jump into the Golem is it a tool and the first thing you'd like to do is uh, fetch within the presets which will be the most convenient scenario for you. So let's take a look at the presets and the one I would like to take a look at is convert a Maya character and some animation to a Golem simulation cache. As soon as you select a preset, it's going to relay out the UI uh, and set up the most convenient option for what you're looking for. So within my scene, um, you may have noticed that within the middle here at the scene origin, I've loaded a Tipos character. So this is the Tipos character uh, which has been used to animate those uh, two skeletons here. Uh, here it has the geometry, the full geometry, which is skin on top of it, and the skeleton is exactly the same than the one we can see there. So first, it's asking me to load a character, Maya character, within the Golem is at tool. So I'm going to jump into the outliner and I'm going to figure out where is the root bone of my character. So it's here. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, and I'm going to load it. So it's um, computing a character name which is based on the root uh, name here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to also I specify what geometry format the character file will be exported. So by default, it's using the brand new Golem character geometry file. Or you can also use, if you'd like to, um, the FBX file format. Then I can jump into the other tab. Um, so do I want to apply a Golem motion onto those characters? So those characters are already animated, so I don't really need to bother with that section. Then I can jump into the simulation tab. So what do I want to do? Here, I want to convert to my animation. So those two characters here are animated, and I want to convert those animation as a Golem solution cache from frame 0 to 210. And what about the skeletons I want to use that character and export from? Um, so obviously here I'm having plenty of different skeletons. So the skeletons I want to specify are just those ones there. So I'm going to select those guys here press that button here and that's going to uh, bring the selection within the tool. Final option is do I want to create a simulation cache library item and the answer is yes which means that at the end I'll be able to jump into the cache library tool and uh, just uh, see my vignette appearing here and uh, just bring it in any scene, uh, duplicate it from my character, apply some layout operation etc etc. So 
when I'm done with that, uh, I want to output it. So the name I'm going to specify will be like cavalry animation. And um, that's going to now export a couple of different files. So first file is um, my character file. So it's going to take my typos character here. It's going to make a golem character file out of it and export the geometry as a golem geometry uh, file as well. Then it's going to take the um, keyframe, the animated skeletons here, convert that as a golem simulation cache, and finally it's going to create a library file which will figure, feature the vignette of those two characters. So when I'm done with that, I just press export. So it's going to take the typos character, convert that as a golem character file first. Cool. Then it's going to load and read the keyframes from Maya. So it's just evaluating at every frame the value of the position, orientation, and scales of the bone and export that as a golem simulation cache. So first it reads the frame. Once the frame uh, would have been read, it's going to also try to read the blend shapes animation if there are any. Here I don't have any blend shapes animation, so that should go pretty fast. So I'm going to let it finish it okay blend shapes and then convert that as a simulation cache and the simulation cache item finally it's going to make a vignette out of it and that's it which means that now i can close the tool i can go into the library uh, tool and open that brand new uh, vignette so if i click on this it's going to create for me a cache proxy node in my scene and now I can see the full geometry deformed of my character. So now I'm having a brand new node, cache proxy node. And if I just scrubble in the time, I can see that uh, my GPU characters, which are now a golem simulation cache, are following uh, perfectly my uh, skeletons. So I can just hide those Maya skeletons. And, um, and then now I can show you what you can do once you're at that step. So... Uh, when you're at that step, you are in a cache proxy mode. So you're actually, what you're seeing here is just a replay of a simulation cache. But even if you are in that state, you can still apply some deformers and some layout operation on top of those characters. If I press F9 here, it means that I can select in component mode my uh, characters. So I can take those guys, move them around. And every single operation I'm going to do is going to be translated as a new layout operation so here if i take my character here it's adding just a translate operation which i can just um, uh, erase or uh, disable or enable i can even select my two characters here like duplicate them something like this something like that uh, i can even uh, maybe make another group put them there and uh, obviously they're like fully synchronized uh, these two so maybe i can time offset them a bit i can just uh, remove a couple of frames so say, okay, I want to remove 20 frames. Time offset uh, the cache for those characters by 20 frames and uh, apply it. And you, now you can see they're like a bit shifted uh, compared to the original character. Um, what about having a terrain? Um, it's, it's really often that um, the terrain in production condition, uh, the terrain changes. Um, as an animator, you do your character maybe on the flat ground and uh, you need to replay them on maybe a different terrain with some uh, obstacles in relief. So uh, you could use the golem layout tools also to snap those characters uh, on a brand new terrain. So if I select the geo there and I select my cache proxy manager and then jump into the attribute editor, I can export um, my selected geometry as a new destination terrain. I can put it here, for example. And now my characters are going to be snapped on that new terrain geometry. So super convenient. Once again, you don't have to know anything about Golem, how to export your character, uh, how to make a simulation, how to export a simulation. Just uh, use the Golem Easy tool to just uh, uh, select your, uh, your skeletons to convert, uh, press convert, and that brings you a new layout, um, a layout ready cache. So what about my other scenario? Here I've converted my uh, soldier, uh, rider soldier characters. So what about the other soldiers, which are walking soldiers? So I'm gonna hide uh, maybe that terrain for now and maybe hide that proxy as well and um, pay attention to those guys. 
So I'm gonna go into simulation mode. Okay. So um, this is here a cache I've, I've been um, I've made into another CRUD package. I exported this into a uh, uh, Maya skeleton file, Maya animated skeleton file, and I imported that within Maya. So I. Uh, the difference from uh, the other scenario here, I don't have a T-Pose character, uh, but I could bring my T-Pose character in it. Uh, I just wanted to show you another way to convert those. So let's say that previously you already made uh, a golem character uh, out of this character. So uh, you already made some you know, geometry variation, some shading variation, and you set up your golem characters using the character maker because uh, you know what to deal with this. Or maybe you already exported that character using the golemizator before, and uh, you don't want to re-export it again because you have already done it. Um, within the Golemizator, you can go into another preset. So let's check uh, the other preset we have. Another preset we having is convert Maya animations to Golem Simulation caches. So the difference here is that we don't have to convert a Maya character anymore. So I can go into that one here. And now instead of asking me to select a skeleton from Maya, it's asking me to load a character file. So I'm going to load my character file I've been already doing or already exporting before and go into next. Next is uh, do I want to play a motion onto those characters? So they already are uh, animated so I don't need to play any motion. Do I need to convert the simulation? So yes, uh, I want to convert the my animation such as before. <coughs> and the skeletons I would like to convert are those ones there. So once again I'm going to make a, like a selection of those going to object mode again and say that it's going to be my selection here. Uh, I want to create another item as well and I want to export this as soldier. Um, I can't remember the name I, I set up for the previous one. Um, whatever, uh, soldier layout. And when I'm done with that, I can just press export. So you can see the difference here is uh, we don't export a character file anymore, nor a character geometry, uh, and it goes directly to exporting the keyframe. So it's going to take a while here to export the 30 characters, so I'm going to let it do it. Once the cache is exported, we also export blend shapes, so here again, we don't have any blend shapes, so that should go pretty quick. Then that will be translated into simulation cache. And finally, we're gonna make a we're gonna make a vignette out of it. Sweet. And now we can open the library tool once again. Maybe refresh it. Uh, oops, no. Actually, importing another file. So importing the soldier layout, and we end up with. A new cache that we can bring into our scene. So let's bring back our soldiers and bring our cavalry back as well. So we end up with two nodes one with the soldier, that one there, and uh, one with the cavalry, one, that one there, and that one with the soldier. So one other advantage here of using a uh, um, Golem and using this command from another crowd package is that uh, let's say your code package doesn't uh, have any integration within Maya or any proper integration in within Maya and you would like to relay out your simulation, you can use the Golem layout to do it. Let's say your code package doesn't uh, support Redshift or uh, another rendering engine or maybe Katana and you want to use the Golem plugins to do so. Uh, once again, you can convert that uh, as a golden cache. And uh, well, you can uh, make the same operation as the one we made before, which is you could select your characters here and uh, go into the layout, say, okay, I would like to duplicate those guys, put them here, and maybe duplicate them again, put them here, time offset them. You could even like select any single character, uh, let's say that one here, and say, okay, I want to edit as geometry variation, maybe I want to remove the helmet is wearing, so I want to change. It doesn't wear the attacker helmet anymore. I wanted to wear this helmet instead. Uh, you can even like go F10 and uh, take any bone, maybe change the position of those bones. And those are just new layers you're just adding on top of it. And um, finally, you can still apply that terrain stuff to all those characters. So I can uh, bring my terrain geo back. 
oops, here, and um, maybe shift it a bit, something like this. And I can say once again that this is going to be my destination terrain. So I'm going to export this, override that file, and um, now I get my two proxies and all my characters being adapted on it. So I hope uh, this makes sense and uh, see you in the next video.